Hello and good evening guys. A very warm welcome to my session. Now, how many ZAT aspirants are out there? Guys, with just a few days to go for ZAT, I'm sure you guys must be burning the midnight oil. You must be pulling up your socks and kind of, you know, hitting the books a lot. Well, when we talk about ZAT, there is something which you need to learn. That is idioms. This was uh, an important part of IFT also and that also gives a few idioms. Uh, you may get these as uh, part of your RC passages or maybe as a direct question. So whatever, in whichever form they give you, you should be definitely prepared with some good idioms. You should have at least, I would say, 100 up your sleeve because you don't know which one you're going to encounter. And that is all about language, as we all know. So it's a language-based thing, of course, so you need to kind of be well prepared. Okay, now when we talk about idioms, what do we mean by idioms? You are familiar with it, I'm sure. Idioms are like, you know, the words say something else and they actually mean something else. The commonest one and the funniest that I always find is like, uh, kick the bucket. I mean, it simply means somebody died. So you'll say, instead of saying kick the, uh, he died, you say he kicked the bucket this morning. That's a euphemism also. In my previous session, I had explained euphemisms. It's a polite way of saying something which may otherwise sound rude. Okay, and anyway, let's come back to the uh, topic, idioms. So what we are going to today, uh, what we are going to do today is we are going to run through a handful of these things, the things that are called idioms. And I'm just going to kind of explain these with the help of examples, with the help of, let's say, sentences, so that these get etched in your memory. You'll be able to retain these for sure. Okay, so let's take a look. Let's move forward. Yes, I have just prepared a list, a simple list. Uh, and yes, these idioms which I have kind of compiled today, I found these somewhere or the other in previous ZAT papers. Some were there in RC, some were there in direct questions. So I just picked a few and compiled this sheet so that you can understand what to expect in ZAT 2020. Okay, let's get started now. A blessing in disguise, that's the first one up there on the list. A blessing in disguise. Now, what can be a blessing in disguise? You know, the wickedest one that I can think of is, uh, let's say India and Pakistan are playing a match. And we know that we are going to lose. It's like a bad scene out there. And we are praying fervently for some miracle to happen. What could happen at this moment? You know, I mean, the players are playing well. Our players are not playing so well. Suddenly, it starts raining. And the match gets kind of, uh, the match gets cancelled. First, they pause the match. But after some time, when it starts raining cats and dogs, that's another one. Hey, when it starts raining cats and dogs, the match, the match gets called off. Now, that is something that I would call a blessing in disguise. And that is a wicked one, isn't it? Okay. Next one, pay through the nose. Now, I remember very well when I had got married and um, I was kind of, you know, uh, planning to buy a Swarovski set. I'm sure you guys know what Swarovski is. It's a uh, crystal. And the jewelry, the Swarovski jewelry is a little bit expensive. Uh, they are quite fashionable also. So I was planning to buy a Swarovski set. Not a pair of earrings, not a finger ring, but yes, I had my, um, I had my sight set quite high. I wanted a whole set. And then my husband, of course, my magnanimous husband, my darling husband, he went to the shop and it was my birthday. He got me a sparkling funky, trendy Swarovski set. When I saw it, I went gaga over it. Hey, that's another one. I went gaga over it. Means I went bananas over it. Ah, went bananas again. I'm talking in riddles. No, that's again an idiom. I went crazy over it. But for this Swarovski set, 
my husband had to pay through the nose. That doesn't mean he took out his uh, kind of booger or something and then he paid that. No, of course, I'm just kidding. He paid a lot of money for that. So when something is quite expensive, when you pay a lot of money for something, you know, you kind of, you pay an arm and a leg for it. That's another one. That is what you call pay through the nose. When we are talking of body parts, that brings me to the next one. Somebody is lying through his teeth. Jane kisne banaye the ye? Naak se pe kiya, daant se usne jhoot bola. I mean, what connections do these things have? Anyway, we have to study them because we want to crack that. Okay, so lying through his teeth. You can make out, I'm sure, from there. When somebody is a kind of uh, a chronic liar, somebody doesn't uh, think twice before lying. And so if somebody is telling a big lie, we can simply say, hey, 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 stop there. You are lying through your teeth. I can see through you. Okay? So don't give me that cock and bull story. That's another one. Don't give me that cock and bull story because I know you are lying through your teeth. That is what it means. Okay. Now, when will somebody lie through his teeth? Let me think of an example. Like, when will somebody lie through his teeth? You know, maybe, maybe, maybe. Um, uh, like, okay, there's a person who works at a bank. Not, a, not in a very high position. These days, these days, the bank employees find it very difficult to uh, sustain on their small salaries. Because of inflation, because of the rising prices, piaz ko hi lelo, ek kg piaz hi le liya to apki aadhi salary to usi me nikal le, right? Anyway, so coming back to the example, let's say there's this bank employee, and he works on a he works for a small salary. He comes home one day, and he says to his wife, "Okay, we we need to go out. We can, we should go out." But when his wife selects the restaurant where she wants to go out for dinner. This man does a somersault because he knows that he cannot afford that expensive restaurant. So he comes up with an excuse, a cock and bull story. He gives something, some, some nonsense to his wife saying that, oh, you know, the owner of that particular restaurant uh, is quite unwell, is critically unwell, he's admitted in the hospital, something, something, something. Now his wife says, hey, I know you're lying through your teeth. Maybe you don't want me to, want to take me to that restaurant. Why is that man lying? Because he finds it difficult to make ends meet. That's the next one on the list, the, uh, the one at number four. He has got a small salary. He finds it difficult to make ends meet. Means, jitna arha hai, to meet his expenses, that salary is not enough. That is when we say this. It is difficult to make ends meet. I hope you got this, guys. That brings me to the next one. Don't judge a book by its cover. Now, ye to, this is quite an easy one. I'm sure you must have guessed it. Appearances can be quite deceptive. This is what it says. Uh, all that glitters is not gold. Right? So don't judge a book by its cover. Uh, that, that reminds me of something, you know. Wait. Uh, when I was a kid or when I was in school, let's say donkeys, donkeys years ago, of course, I remember we were told the first, first impression is the last impression. So these things are quite contradictory. I mean, if you say first impression in the, is the last impression, so then the book comes in front of you and you judge the book by its cover. But then this one is saying, don't judge a book by its cover. Whoa, 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 what are we supposed to do? Ye bhi hai, wo bhi hai, wo bhi hai. Anyway, you don't break your head over that. Just learn these. So when we say appearances are deceptive, that means don't judge a book by its cover. A person may appear. Uh, hey, Praveen, good evening. Good to see you. We are doing some idioms, Praveen. Right now, I'm discussing number five on my list. Okay. So, when I say don't judge a book by its cover, I say appearances are deceptive. Or I can say all that glitters is not gold. Or I can say, okay, if a person is there and he looks kind of, you know, a little tattered. He has a disheveled appearance. Um, we, cannot, we cannot just assume that the person is not educated. Or he doesn't know anything. He's not smart. Okay, Praveen? So, don't judge a book because uh, if, suppose the person walks in and you think, oh, isko kya aata hoga? He, he looks tattered. But then when he opens his mouth, he speaks flawless English. 
and he speaks sense. He comes across as an intelligent person. So that proves my point. Don't judge a book by its cover. Okay? Yes, Praveen, exactly. That's a brilliant example, Mahatma Gandhi. I mean, had we come across Mahatma Gandhi in today's era, crossing the road or something, we would have thought, he called it, wearing this loin cloth and with this danda. I mean, had we not known that he's the Mahatma, we would have judged him by his appearance and we would have kind of, you know, um, ignored him on the road. But then he was a different league altogether. Okay, the next one, Praveen. <laughs> okay, Suraj. Um, I keep saying these things to entertain you guys. I mean, the truth is that I really love English. I love reading the idioms. I love learning everything. And I love using them with my students in a very natural way. But I just keep saying these things and I keep pretending to be annoyed so that you guys can stay entertained. Okay? <laughs> okay. The next one, Suraj. Suraj and Praveen. Uh, that brings me to the sixth one. Okay. Now that says biting off more than you can chew. Ah, what does it mean? What can it possibly mean, Suraj? I mean, I want, let's say I want to eat. I'm a foodie. Uh, I'm, the truth is I'm not. But then let's say I'm a foodie and I want to eat, I want to gobble up things. What does, how does it connect to that? How does this connect to that? Okay, uh, take the example of an apple. I asked you to take a bite of my apple. Fine. And you took a big bite. Now it's there. The piece is there wedged between your teeth. You're not able to move. You move your mouth. You're not able to chew. Yes, more than one can handle Saurabh. Exactly. Suraj, Saurabh and Praveen. Yes. So more than more than what you can chew. Your teeth, your, your mouth is like jammed. That is exactly what is called biting off more than you can chew. This need not always apply to food and food habits. It can be like, you know, I mean, I'm taking too many things on my plate. That is another idiom. I have too many things on my plate. Okay. So why would you take up some assignments which you know you will not be able to finish in time? You are already busy. You are busy up to the neck. Please do not take more assignments. Don't take more responsibilities. Take only as much as you can handle. Yes, exactly what Saurav said. Thank you for taking the words out of my mouth. Hey, that's another one, Saurav. You took the words out of my mouth. Right? Okay, next one. A similar one. Cut your coat according to your cloth. This reminds me of that movie, Jo Mere Ghar Me Jane Kitni Bar Chal Chuki Hai TV Pe. And I can't, I'm fed up of this. Can you, can you make a guess? Cut your, co cut your coat according to your cloth. Which movie am I referring to? It had Johnny Lever. Uh, Tabu. Uh, I think, I think. No, Juhi Chawla. Yes, Johnny Lever, Tabu. And I forgot the actor. Which movie am I talking about? Cut your coat according to your cloth. Anybody? Praveen, Saurav, Suraj? Okay, that was Amdani Athani Kharcha Rupaya. The income that you have, whatever you earn, let your expenses be according to that. If you do not cut your coat, uh, yes, Vishal, you got it, yes. So if you do not cut your coat according to your cloth, what will happen? Out of the list, tell me one result. If you don't cut your coat, ah, Govinda, Govinda, Saurav, yes. <laughs> yes. Prachi, yes. If you don't cut your coat according to your cloth, what will be the result? In this, ek hai jo result hoga. Tell me, please, guys. Tell me, Prachi. Hey, Sandeep. Kya hoga? Agar aap kharcha zyada karenge. In mein se kaun sa hone wala hai? Effect kaun sa hoga? Good to see you, Sandeep. Batayye kaun sa hoga iska result? Bankrupt? Yes, Praveen. I said from the list, ek hai jo effect hoga uska. 
क्या होगा कमान प्रवीण इफ आई ओवर स्पेंड इफ आई बिकम स्पेंड थ्रू इट ओके वॉट विल हैपन इन मे से यस प्राची यू आर अ जीनियस प्राची को मिलते हैं एक करोड़ वो प्राची आप प्रवीण से लेके जाएगा क्योंकि प्रवीण ने मेरा आंसर नहीं दिया आपने दे दिया यू गेट वन करोड़ यू टेक इट फ्रॉम प्रवीण ओके सो इफ यू डू नॉट कट योर कोड अकॉर्डिंग टू योर क्लॉथ यू आर गोइंग टू फाइंड इट डिफिकल्ट टू मेक एंड मीट राइट यस डिफिकल्ट टू मेक एंड मीट एंड याद रख लो विशाल खुराना बिकॉज दैट इतना पापी है कि वो मेक एंड मीट आपको एरर में भी दे सकता है सो इट्स डिफिकल्ट टू मेक एंड मीट ओके एन डी एस दोनों छोर है प्रवीण सॉरी विशाल दोनों छोर है एंड जस्ट रिमेम्बर दिस इधर से पैसा आ रहा है इधर से हमारे एक्सपेंसिस हैं इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू मेक द मीट दैट इज वॉट इट इज ठीक है सो एंड ओके सो वी आर डन विथ थ्री एंड थ्री सिक्स एंड वन सेवन सेवन डन फाइन ब्लेसिंग इन दिस गाइज विच इज लाइक कुछ भी अचानक हो गया मेरेकल ओ वाओ दट ब्लेसिंग इन दिस गाइज पे थ्रू द नोज समथिंग वेरी एक्सपेंसिव जिसको हम बोलते हैं पेइंग Paying an arm and a leg for something, lying through his teeth, that is like a बहुत बड़े liar है. You're a glib liar. You're a chronic liar. Fine. Difficult to make ends meet. We learned that. Don't judge a book by its cover. Appearances पे ना जाओ, दिखावे पे ना जाओ, भावनाओं को समझो, दिखावे पे ना जाओ, शब्दों पे ना जाओ. Right? Okay. Biting off more than you can chew and cut your coat. We are done with these. Okay. Let's move on. Do you have a doubt? Related to any of these, otherwise I'll proceed. Praveen, Harsh, Prati, all of you, thank you for joining me, guys. It becomes all the more entertaining when good people like you are around. And you know how much I love my students. Yes, but I am okay. Any doubt related to these? No. Very good. I think it's as clear as crystal. that's another one that's a simile also as clear as crystal and you can call it an idiom also crystal crystal compare kar raha fine okay next list up there on the screen guys harsh missed it by a whisker now missed it by a whisker harsh was running the race praveen was also running the race prachi was also running the race what happened prachi came first Yes, yes, Saurav. Prachi came first. She outdid Harsh and Praveen. Fine, and they missed it by a whisker, just by this much. Okay, just by this much they missed it. They missed it. Prachi reached the finishing line. Praveen was just right behind her, and then Saurav, Ad, Harsh, जो लोग भी साथ में दौड़ रहे थे, the boys were right behind her. Now what happened? You know. हाँ, so missed it by a whisker means like you missed something इतना सा के लिए इतना सा जिसको बोलते हैं ना हम प्यार से इतना सा के लिए इंडिया पाकिस्तान का मैच हो उसमें हार गए इतना सा से या एक्सीडेंट uh, किसी का कुछ हुआ मतलब बोने जा रहा था and I missed it by a whisker इतना सा से ओके okay? इतना सा के लिए now what happened in this race जो ये लोग दौड़ रहे थे तीन लड़के और एक लड़की इसमें क्या हुआ when the girl I mean when our Prachi she won the race the boy started you know they started coming up with some explanations ma'am it was just by this much ma'am it was just by like you know half an inch and um, no 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 it's like almost as good as first ah really first is first a miss is as good as a mile aapne miss kiya usko chahe wo itne se hi se kyu na kiya ho that is as big as a mile So, आपका जो चूक यहाँ पे मिस मींस अ चूक ठीक है सेकंड वाले में आई एम ऑन द सेकंड वन नाउ ऑन द लिस्ट यू मिस्ड इट बाय अ विस्कर यू स्टार्टेड कंप्लेनिंग नो 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 इट्स ऑलमोस्ट एज गुड एज फर्स्ट मैं अभी फर्स्ट हूं मैं अभी फर्स्ट हूं अ मिस इज एज गुड एज अ माइल प्राची इज फर्स्ट मींस शी इज फर्स्ट चाहे वो सौरव इतने से सही फर्स्ट क्यों ना आई हो आई होप दीज टू आर क्लियर ओके the third one on the list between the devil and deep sea i use this one quite often between the devil and deep sea simply means you are like caught between two bad things okay 
for a person like me who's a fence sitter when it comes to politics in India, because I find Indian politics quite dirty, and I don't mind saying that I'm a fence sitter, I love to use this analogy. I love to say, by ek taraf Congress and ek taraf BJP. So it's like I'm caught between the devil and deep sea. Whisker is, yes, whisker is a long hair, yes. Yes, so I love to use this analogy. I love to say, yes, I'm caught between the devil and uh, deep sea. Ek taraf dekhti hu to devil hai, that is Congress. Dusri taraf dekhti hu to khai hi khai hai. I mean, that is the, the deep sea, that is BJP. Both are equally bad. They both are not worried about the condition of the country, right? So this is what it is between the devil and deep sea. Ek taraf khai, ek taraf kumakarsh. I'm sure you guys have heard of this. Iska ek aur hota hai. Uh... From the frying pan into the fire. Okay. Main, um, burger ka wo jo aata hai na, cutlet. I was frying the burger. The, that, is that, that is actually called the burger. Jo cutlet hota. I was frying it. Suddenly, usko laga aisa ki, you know, why am I being fried in the frying pan? Main yaha se food pe jata hu. Wo kya kya usne? It jumped out of the frying pan. And obviously, when it jumped out of the frying pan, it, did not, it could not jump so far as to land safely. It fell into the fire. So that is what it is called. Kua and Kai. That is what it is called from the frying pan into the fire. From one bad situation to another bad situation or probably a worse situation. frying pan Now you're getting burned. So between the devil and deep sea, it's like equally bad. From the frying pan into the fire, it's like from a bad to a worse situation. Yes. Okay. So we are done with number three. Now, since we are talking about the devil, that reminds me of devil's advocate, the, number, the fourth one on the screen. Devil's advocate. Okay. Now, devil's advocate, let's say, maybe, 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 you know, uh, maybe Alauddin Khilji. Achanak, mujhe yaad hai. Alauddin Khilji, because uh, this morning I was in a, in a group discussion. This morning we were discussing Padmavat and how there were controversies related to that. Isle mera dimaag mein Alauddin Khilji aagya. So, let's say Alauddin, yes, worse to worse and yes, probably. Fine. So when I talk of devil's advocate, let's say Alauddin Khilji, okay? a big devil that I can think of. If somebody starts supporting him or starts giving him the benefit of doubt, ah, another one, give somebody the benefit of doubt, means support somebody and say, ya, ho sakta hai, ye innocent hai. Ho sakta hai, isne ho nahi kiya hai. Ho sakta hai, he did not cast a, cast a bad eye. On Padmavat, maybe if somebody says that, well, you are playing the devil's advocate. You are giving him the benefit of doubt. Koi buri cheez hai, koi bura insaan hai, koi kharaab kuch wo hai, and you're trying to support that by saying, ho sakta hai. Give him the benefit of doubt. That is called playing the devil's advocate. I hope it is clear. Okay. Praveen Prachi Harsh, Sandeep Saurav. Yogendra, is devil's advocate clear to you? Advocate is somebody who supports you, right? So when you play the devil's advocate, you're supporting somebody who's bad, who's crappy. That brings me to the next one, fit as a fiddle. If somebody is, is fit as a fiddle, again, that's a simile, right? You all know simile by now because I have done many sessions on those metaphors and similes. So if somebody is fit as a fiddle, it means he is fit. He is like healthy. He doesn't have any problem with his health. Right? Khaega, piega, walk karega, whatever. So he is fit as a fiddle. That doesn't need much explanation. Right, Sora? Fit as a fiddle is self-explanatory. We use it very commonly. Fit as a fiddle. The, the word fit reminds me of another one, which I had... Uh, Encountered in one of the RCs, cat car scene. Something that starts, something that, um, something that initiates in fits and starts. My career began in fits and starts. Now you guess the meaning of this, Prachi. I'm leaving it to you, Prabhi. My career began in fits and starts. Yeah, my career began with fits and starts. What could it probably mean? Hmm. Say guys. 
Any guesses? That means with a lot of speed breakers, bumps, hiccups, hiccups, hitchkia, roadblocks. Okay? So if something, if there, there are fits and starts, that means it's not smooth. After some time, the creases get ironed out. Press mar de pe uske par. All the creases, jitne speed breakers hote hai na, jitne bumps hote hai. After some time, the creases get ironed out. But in the beginning, there were fits and starts. Yeah, it, it began with fits and starts. Fine. Speed breakers, yes, sort of. Exactly. Fine. That brings me to the second last one. Jisko hum bolte hai, penultimate. P-E-N-U-L-T-I-M-A-T-E. Penultimate. Last one is called the ultimate one. This is penultimate. And aapko pata hai, third last ko kehte hai, anti-penultimate. Three, two words for you. Ultimate to aap sabko pata hai. Second last is uh, penultimate. Third last is anti-penultimate. So fit as a fiddle was anti-penultimate. Okay. Let's talk about the second last one. Give someone the cold shoulder. Well, give somebody the cold shoulder. Or put somebody in the dog house. Kya meaning ho sakta hai? Well, my cold shoulder de rahi hai. I'm kind of giving you the cold shoulder. That means I'm kind of, I'm trying to ignore you. I'm not being warm to you. I'm, I'm ignoring you royally. The similar one, a similar one is put somebody in the dog house. He has been put in the dog house because Imagine We don't do that. It's just an idiom. And this cold shoulder, I think uh, cold shoulder, uh, you know, uh, is me. अभी जो लेटेस्ट एक ड्रेस का फैशन आया है लड़कियों का जिसमें यहाँ पर पूरा स्लीव्स के ऊपर छेद रहता है ऐसा देस अ होल एंड योर शोल्डर्स गेट कोल्ड दैट इस कॉल्ड द ड्रेस इस कॉल्ड कोल्ड शोल्डर एंड व्हेन आई हर्ड द नेम द फर्स्ट टाइम इन अ शॉप मैडम कोल्ड शोल्डर देखेंगी मैंने कहा ह� very funny okay so when you give somebody the cold shoulder as i said it's kind of you're ignoring somebody yes or not supporting exactly fine the last one now if uh, but let's go back to the cold shoulder one you know suppose i come home and i say to my mother you know what uh, that particular person is giving that particular person the cold shoulder or let's say let's say let's say the uh, latest couple the hot and happy happen. i mean the nice couple right now is saf and karina Let's say I go to my friends and I say, hey, you know what? Saf these days has started giving the cold shoulder to Karina. They'll ask me, huh? Where did you hear that? Well, I heard it on the grapevine. What could it possibly mean? I heard it on the grapevine. Angur khate khate suna mene? Ya anguro ne aake sunaya mujhe? Ya angur ki lat ne aake sunaya mujhe? Ya Saf chadha wa tha angur ki lat pe and then he was giving Karina the cold shoulder. No, it's nothing of that sort. Heard it on the grapevine simply means I heard it as a rumor. The rumor mills. Rumor mills kehte hasko. I heard it as a rumor. It's a gossip. Maybe I, it's just a rumor. It may not be true. Grapevine lat kaisi hoti hai? Angur ki lat jo hoti it spreads very fast. Aap usko kahi bhi grow karke dekhe it spreads very 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 fast. Rumor wasi hai. It spreads extremely fast. That is why grapevine ka matlab hai. Got it? So this brings me to the end of my list. We have done 14 idioms which I had found in some of the previous papers and I just felt it my duty to get you guys acquainted with these 14. These are just, um, just a trailer. I mean, I would call them the tip of the iceberg. Idioms are like a real iceberg. They are as deadly as an iceberg. Fine. It's another thing that I love them. But then for students, Idioms are a real iceberg. So these 14 are just the tip of the iceberg. Yes, yes, from in word of mouth, exactly. But word of mouth, you know, word of mouth is positive. Word of mouth is taken for marketing. It's taken for promotion. It's taken as a positive thing. I mean, if I as an educator get word of mouth, you go and you uh, refer me to some other students. That is very nice. That's not exactly gossip. Yes, wildfire. Exactly. I like that sort. I like that. Wildfire. It spreads like wildfire. Okay, guys. Rahul, once I finish the session, this will be available on YouTube. 
so you will be able to record this you will be able to watch this again or you will be able to note down the idioms whenever you want chinese whisper yes i like that game actually chinese whisper is just like a rumor mill shuru kuch aur bolna shuru karte hain and it ends up totally different i like that game yes you gained aap log zack de lijiye uske baad hum sab milke chinese whisper khelenge Hello guys that brings me to the end of this session I really love you all for being a part of it for sitting through with me thank you so much Rahul thank you so much Yogendra Prachi Saurav Sandeep all of you Harsh thank you so much for being there and I really enjoyed myself with you guys 14 hi sahi tip of the iceberg hi sahi at least learn these you never know in me se hi aa jaye you never know i may prove to be your lucky charm मेरा बताया हुआ चौदह में से ही एक आध कोई आ जाए एंड तीन मार्क्स आपके यहीं से आ जाएंगे है ना सो फिंगर्स क्रॉस स्टे पॉजिटिव एंड विश मी गुड नाइट थैंक यू सो मच आई सी यू अगेन प्रॉबेबली टुमारो बाय बाय गाइस